Stomach Cancer. This is one of a series of videos found on the website about cancer.com. This video is primarily about the role of radiation in the treatment of gastric or stomach cancer. This is a fairly uncommon cancer. Only 1.3 percent of all cancers in the United States are gastric or stomach. The odds of ever getting this cancer is less than 1 percent. The risk factors for this have to do with H. pylori infection, which is a bacteria found in the stomach. It's also more common in old age, men, probably related to diet, definitely related to smoking, and other odd things such as pernicious anemia. According to the National Cancer Institute, the only preventive strategies are smoking cessation. Men who smoke have a 60 percent higher risk of stomach cancer, 20 percent higher in women and if they stop smoking the risk goes down and perhaps treating H. pylori infection with antibiotics will lower the risk of gastric cancer by 35 to 40 percent. The average age for this cancer is 69 so just a little older than the average cancer patient and the age distribution is shown here 50s, 60s and 70s. The odd thing about stomach cancer this was the most lethal cancer among men in the United States back in the 1930s and the mortality has dramatically declined over the last 80 years as shown here. In women basically the same thing it wasn't quite as common but for unknown reasons the mortality of this cancer has declined dramatically in the United States over the last 80 years. This is not because the cure rate is particularly good. Over the last 30 years the five-year survival rate has improved a bit from 15 to 28 percent but this is still a very serious cancer. The symptoms are not particularly helpful. Weight loss, abdominal pain, nausea, trouble swallowing, bloody bowel movements and early satiety or ulcer type pain so these are nonspecific. The workup for this cancer generally would start with an upper GI or a GI endoscopy with a biopsy. A CAT scan or a PET scan may be used Ultrasound endoscopy is now commonly used to try to determine how deep the cancer is prior to a decision on surgery. The pathology report should be reviewed for a number of things. The histology, which means the type of cancer. This is almost always adenocarcinoma, either intestinal or diffuse type. The depth of invasion is important for staging the patient. If the patient's had a resection, then the completeness of surgery will be judged by the surgical margins or edges and the number of lymph nodes involved. The grade of the cancer or how mutated the cells are, are is important and other risk factors such as lymphascular invasion or perineural invasion may be noted by the pathologist. The five-year survivals are shown here by SEER stage is noted only 25 percent of the patients are staged are found at an early localized stage they have a fairly good survival, 63 percent, but as noted the survival for most of the other stages is much poor. The wall of the stomach has at least five layers, four or five layers. The inner layer of mucosa is the thickest. The submucosa is supportive of that. Then there's a muscle layer, muscularis. Then there's a fat or serosa and subserosa layer outside that. The pathologist will look at the depth of the cancer how it invades into these layers of the bowel or stomach to determine the stage. And the stage system, a TNM, the T or tumor stage, is based on how deep the cancer goes. Once it gets into the muscle layer, it's T2. Once it gets into the serosa, T3 or T4. The next thing will be the lymph node status. There are lymph nodes that surround the stomach, both on the front and the back, or lesser and greater curvature. And there are multiple other lymph nodes that surround the blood vessels in the middle of the abdomen. The N system counts the number of lymph nodes involved. This will affect the stage. And the T and the N are combined for the staging system, which, as noted here, is quite complicated. The staging system does, however, predict well for overall survival, as shown here. The primary treatment of gastric cancer is surgical resection. For very early patient, endoscopic resection may be an option. For most patients, requires some type of gastrectomy. The big question, is there a role for radiation in gastric cancer? 
these two pictures below show the typical radiation dose distribution with more conventional radiation and now with IMRT which is much more highly targeted. We do know after surgery there's a high risk of a local relapse or the cancer recurring in the region of the stomach or the lymph node areas and the common sites where it recurs are shown here gastric bed the region around the stomach or the anastomosis where the patient is reconnected or perhaps the other lymph nodes that weren't removed. So there may be a role for radiation either pre-op before surgery or post-op after surgery. For instance, one study showed that the risk of a local relapse was much lower in patients who had preoperative radiation. And another study with postoperative radiation showed an improvement in the overall survival. There was a study, the uh, 0116 trial, clearly showed a survival advantage after surgery by giving the patient 5-FU chemotherapy plus radiation. Similar studies in blue, the survival cure curve for combined chemo radiation after surgery shows an improved survival as noted here and for various other stages the survival is better in patients given chemo and radiation after surgery. In a meta-analysis that combines all the published studies most of the data showed an improvement in survival with radiation the black box is on the left side of this curve and when the data is combined again in a so-called meta-analysis radiation improves the survival by 26 to 31 percent. The best advice on detailed treatment of gastric cancer can be found on the website of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network at nccn.org. This can be accessed. The two issues would be who would benefit from pre-op or who would benefit from post-op radiation. For pre-op treatment, if the patient is medically fit, and it's an early cancer, they should go directly to surgery. If the patient is medically fit for surgery but the cancer is more advanced, then they may benefit from preoperative chemotherapy or chemo radiation. And if the patient is not fit for surgery, chemo radiation would be the only option. As far as postoperative radiation, guidelines are similar. If the patient has an R0 resection, which means a complete resection with negative surgical margins, most of those patients after surgery will not require chemo or radiation. If the cancer is more advanced, deeper into the wall of the stomach, or the patient has high-risk features, which it would include poorly differentiated or high-grade cancer, limb vascular or perineural invasion, or a young age meaning less than 50, they may well benefit then from postoperative chemo radiation. And those patients who have an incomplete resection, an R1 resection means positive microscopic margins, and an R2 resection means there was visible cancer left behind. And these patients generally all will receive postoperative chemo radiation. And the techniques now for radiation have been well defined. The RTOG, Radiation Therapy Oncology Group, has an atlas to help the physicians contour or, or uh, include the areas that need to be radiated on a computer plan. And similarly, the NCC and NCCN has guidelines for the proper dose, 45 to 50 gray, and the safe dose to the other organs such as liver, kidney, spinal cord that need to be protected. There may also be a role for radiation in the palliative setting if the patient has advanced cancer and is not curable, radiation is quite effective often in, in relieving bleeding, obstruction, or pain, as noted here. And a similar study with a lower dose of radiation, 54% of the time the bleeding responded to palliation, though obstruction and pain response was lower. All the details can be found on the website of aboutcancer.com.